Today, I'm arriving to the primary destination for this trip, the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. My friend Mark is local to the area and has put together a route for us to explore, but I'm arriving a few hours earlier than he is, so it's up to me to find tonight's campsite. Navigating these tight trees led me to this puddle, and I should have known better not to cross at this angle. Of course, all of my winch gear is behind my rear door, my rear door that I don't have room to open. Max tracks are nothing short of amazing. I managed to get back out to the road and flag Mark down to show him the campsite that I'd claimed for us. Right by the river, but a little trashed, unfortunately. All in all, an incredible campsite though. After catching up with Mark for the evening, it's time to hit the tent because it sounds like tomorrow is going to be a long day on the trail. I'm greeted by a typical Midwestern morning, which means 60% humidity and nearly 85 degrees by 9 a.m. Before heading to the trail, we're going to finish up some coffee and pack up our gear. Along our route is a well-known state park we want to stop and check out since we're only a few miles away from it. Mark has repeatedly plowed mud through this unavoidable spot with a stock bumper, but he's got a trick up his sleeve. Explain to the non-Land Rover people what you're doing. All right, well, this little doohickey IID tool allows you to change like anything you want to change in this truck. Clearly, I need a little more clearance, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this to override the default air suspension and try to get myself another inch or so. Let's go to height adjust. I'm gonna hit program. Upload changes. Doing it. There it goes. Wow. I had to get a pretty good run at it myself. I'm a lot heavier. 
With the extra clearance, Mark is no longer shoveling mud, and he makes it through relatively easily. Oh, yeah. Here's my backup camera. It's smoke. It didn't like sitting in the uh, muddy water for 15, 20 minutes, so that sucks. In rural America, even areas with paved roads can leave you tens of miles, if not farther, from a gas station. I always carry extra fuel for this very reason. This beautiful place is ironically called the Devil's Den and has some strange tales to tell. Namely, in 1946, an eight-year-old girl camped here with her family and suddenly vanished while her family was right next to her. Search crews looked for her for six days before finding her a 30-mile hike away, barefoot with nothing but her bathing suit on. Scent dogs had searched the area several times already, and the child said that she had called out to them when she saw them, but for some reason they couldn't hear her. Her ability to survive these six days is a bit of a mystery due to the amount of poisonous berries and treacherous terrain that was challenging even for trained outdoorsmen and women searching for it. There are several modern stories like this as well, and I personally find this kind of history fascinating. Okay, back to the fun part. I'm not entirely sure where Mark's taking me. Uh, he knows the area a little bit better, but he's got a bunch of routes planned. I don't know if any of these are gonna be like incredible off-road trails or if they're just gonna be dirt roads or whatever, but I'm just happy to spend some time off of the grid rather than being in the campsite. People seem to have an idea that when you build a truck like this, you shouldn't be at a campsite. I do not think that way at all. Finding remote campsites is of course what we're all in this for, but I do enjoy being able to go from those campsites and I have a vehicle that is fully set up to go off into the woods and smash through some other things. I have so much mud on this right now. The paved roads through this area are more confusing than the mazes of trail in the middle of the desert. But luckily, Mark knows where he's going and he's working on getting us back into the rocks and back into the dirt. The trails here are extremely tight from all the vegetation and pinstripes on your vehicle are unavoidable. Mark alerted me that he can feel something in the rear suspension, so we need to check it out before we continue down the trail. One of the boots on his air suspension has fallen off, and I'm usually more helpful for this sort of an event, but I have zero experience with this sort of technology, so my best guess is to throw a giant zip tie on the boot and hope for the best. We're a bit confused on what line the trail follows, so I'm crossing the river to see what lies ahead. We're undecided on how to proceed as our zip tie repair immediately popped off. There are no air suspension leaks, but we need to be careful. With little knowledge of the suspension, I would assume that one airbag leaking would result in a complete air system failure. And maybe I'm wrong, but I'm trying to avoid finding out today. So believe it or not, the trail actually goes through here. After making sure the trail does in fact go through the river, I'm going ahead to see how rough it gets. If it's even moderately difficult, we may need to turn around and find another way.
River gravel with a mix of large rocks gives us some concerns with the Land Rover. Mark doesn't have lockers and risking digging down into the gravel with an exposed airbag is an unnecessary risk. I'm not sure I'll ever understand why driving through water is so much fun, but I think we can all agree that it's the highlight of every trip. changing that tire we were way too hot so we jumped in the river and uh, that was nice to cool off for a while cooled blew down had some lunch and now we are on our way back out of the trail to try to find another place that meets up with it so we can avoid putting any water into his suspension system just because neither of us know really how those systems work so better safe than sorry so we're heading out of there and uh whatever it's still fun having a good time I'm absolutely horrified of the horse flies that we've been seeing. They are like the size of my pinky. I'm not exaggerating. After several hours of bumping down some trails, Mark is leading us to the place that we're going to call home for the night. Look at the spot Mark found us. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's perfect. This is like perfect. <laughs> this is a really awesome campsite he found here. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. I would not have found this without Mark knowing where it's at. It's really slick over here, but we have a potential water slide at our campsite and he brought tubes so we're going to try to slide down into that and that is going to be awesome because it is still so hot out here so we're going to slide down into this water it's probably only like three feet deep <laughs>
kind of steep though. It looks as smooth, but I don't think it's as steep. Having a water park at camp is incredible when it's this hot out. This is possibly the most fun I've ever had at a campsite. Nothing too extravagant for dinner. Chicken and mashed potatoes. After a few ice cold sleep aids out of the Snowmaster, it's time to climb up into the tent and finally get some time out of the heat. Having a portable AC for this kind of climate has been incredible. I keep having to reshoot this because my lens keeps fogging up from the mist that's moving through. But this is the this is the spot that Mark shared with me. This is the spot he found when he was just trailing around one day. When he first found it, it didn't have the water flow it does now, so he couldn't ride down the actual stream part. But uh, he brought me here and showed me this spot because he'd already had it mapped and wanted to camp here. He didn't camp here the first time and ended up being based by our own little private water park, and it was amazing. Very fortunate that he was willing to share this spot with me. And, uh, and now I can say I've camped at a campsite with its own water slide. Never seen that before. I'll probably never see it again. And this is one of the coolest campsites I've ever been at. If you find a spot like this, it's like treasure. Don't share this online. Don't share this kind of stuff online. If you found a treasure box and you couldn't carry it out and you put online that I need help to go find this treasure, when you go back to retrieve it, it'll be gone. And that's the same situation we're in with a lot of campsites. People like to share them online and I get it. I'm gonna share pictures of this, I'm gonna share videos of this, but I will not share where this is other than the state of Arkansas. So try to keep these types of places wild. People need to find this kind of stuff to enjoy it. And, and so anyway, this has been an awesome campsite, an awesome experience in Arkansas. I wish I had more time. It's pretty rowdy here. In Colorado, you don't get a drive through. You get a drive through a little bit of water in Colorado. But not like here, here you're driving through like rivers and stuff. So I'm looking forward to the next time I can come out and uh, actually get to get into the nitty gritty. Mark will have his truck ironed out a little bit. We might have a little bit of a group coming out to do it next time. And it should be a pretty cool experience. It's time to pack up the gear, get the AC charging and get moving down the trail. Leaving here is bittersweet and I've got more cool adventures ahead, but I wish this one could last just a little bit longer. I have to leave the Ozarks behind for now while I make my way back home to Colorado. I'm already looking forward to my next trip to Seamark and exploring more of Arkansas.
This is my last day on this trip, and as I wake up the subtle waves hitting the rocks, it's a bittersweet feeling. Anytime a trip is coming to a close, I'm excited for what's next, but never excited to see these people and these places in the rearview mirror. You can spend a lifetime finding new places to explore in this country and making new memories with friends old and new. And my plan is to do just that. <laughs>